I remember 2006 or 2007 when you came in um, the sit class in, you know. Uh, oh, I've been to SDK. Yeah, the sit class in, and then every learner they went crazy, and then they went out of the class. They didn't care what it's in the middle of the class. And when you told us that it's possible, now we're gassy, you know, showing us your scars and. Yeah, you like doing that. You never had my face. Studies, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. so <laughs> you give him goosebumps. You know? <laughs> so I'm literally sitting with one of the students I used to motivate yeah. many years back, ago. Back, back then, I I'm literally now sitting with him. He's now a businessman. Yeah, I'm a hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> this is the hustlers' corner. Hello, guys. Big call me Spura Archer. You know, first up, straight to that shop shop sign on the count of one, two, three. Click. Click, click, click. Thank you for clicking that like button. Let's click the subscription button. Click. Don't forget to switch on that notification bell. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. I told you guys this year I'm putting in work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start putting out episodes weekly. But once I get into my form, I'm going to be putting out episodes maybe two a week, three a week. I want us to end up getting into a space where we're putting out content daily. Might not be interviews daily, but it might just be content that is... Um, that is maybe bite-sized, micro bits type of content that we're going to push out there. Because you guys are always in Tallinn Tetis. So I'm not going to let you down this year. I'm going to put in the work. Guys, as you already know, last year I started venturing into real estate and property. And I started telling you that I'm new in it. I'm learning it. Although over the years I've bought homes, I've invested in some houses, I've sold some houses. Um, but I've never really focused on real estate as my, pro like my main business which is what I have started doing from last year. Um, because I'm very transparent with the journey that I go through, anything that I'm doing in business in my personal life, I, you, I would usually then bring it into my, um, into some of the things that I do into the cameras and I'll talk about it because I know there's a lot of people out there who can do with um, learning as much as they can as far as real estate and property is concerned. And then I started talking about cryptocurrency and then I've been preaching entrepreneurship all these years, but moving forward, um this hustlers corner platform is going to start adding some other shows we're going to start adding content that is to do with all sorts of different industries but because i am in cryptocurrency because i'm in real estate we definitely will be having ongoing content that is around crypto ongoing content that is around real estate and the people that i'm going to invite here some of them they're going to be repeat um visitors just like this brother reason why he's going to become a repeat visitor he doesn't only have the heart to be humble enough to go back to where he comes from and um, develop it. But he's also young, he's dynamic, he's well-spoken, he's bright, he's smart, he's educated. And for me, I look at him as one of those guys that are the future of um, real estate in South Africa. We do know, guys, that uh, a lot of us are in the back foot. We're only starting out now. We're starting to understand this business thing now. We're figuring it out as we go. We're making, out, we're making a lot of mistakes. But at some point, we'll eventually get good at this thing because we can only get better as we go. So, ladies and gents, this is the most I will speak on this episode. He's an entrepreneur, a property investor. He's also a motivational speaker. Oh, that explains why he's so well-spoken. <laughs> he's used to it. He's got experience of speaking in public, in public platforms. Because obviously when you are a motivational speaker, you are used to crowds. He is a business accountant by profession, a distinguished board member in several boards. He holds four qualifications, of which the highest is an honors in taxation. So, Muntwe Namba. <laughs> and is a founder and CEO of his own property and real estate investment and development company, Biz House. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to welcome Lebuchang Lebep. How are you doing, my brother? I'm extremely well. How are you, my brother? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really honored uh, with the introduction you did. Uh, um, you know, that's, he speaks very, very well of, um, of me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm for for that. That. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I come to this interview and it's like, I didn't even tell him. I didn't even know what he was going to be wearing. So this is me wearing this part. Oh, sorry. I w I've got a lot of pairs of parts. I've got a lot of pairs of drips. But look at what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing this drip. This is a classic one, this one, the black and white one. But it's a bit dirty now. Yeah. But I'm wearing this drip. Can you please show us what you're wearing? 
I'm also actually wearing the same the same shoe. <laughs> and I'm wearing a black t-shirt. You also wearing a black t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's quite funny because in the morning um when I prepared I had intended to wear my white uh, bazaar's t-shirt. So because of my white sneakers. So um and then wh- what happened is I found that there was a a a um like a, a mark on it. Yeah. So I then decided, you know what, let me just put in a black t-shirt. It's like um, the universe was, was against me wearing a white t-shirt. I tried the round neck one. It also had stains on it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me just, <laughs> by default, uh, wear the black one. But the great minds think alike. 100%. And I love wearing black from time to time. If you got peeling, I got to get black. I love black. Yeah, apparently black is a, is a color of royalty as well. Of course. Yeah. It signifies boldness, strength. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's the strongest color out of all of them. Some of you guys who've done science out there, you know, when we're talking Roig Biv, red, orange, yellow, and etc., the colors of the rainbow, yes. the strongest color there, that all the other colors, they can try and try, the, the strong, solid one that remains is the black. The 100%. black. I don't know what they call it. It's got its own ling- English what what. Yes. Anyway, with that being said, guys, I just want to give a big a, a plug. Let me remove my latte. I just want to give a plug to these Durban guys. So this is merch. I bumped into it at the airport at Oar Tambo and I, I grabbed myself, I think, three t-shirts. This is called the Flamboyant Kid. Go check them out on Instagram, the Flamboyant Kid. They've got some beautiful merch. They do hats, they do shorts, they do t-shirts, all different kinds. And I, I've never met them. I've never spoken to them. I just love their merchandise and I just bought it. So I thought, um, why not just give them a plug on the show today? And I also would like to give a plug to these guys. Just like when Theo was coming up, you know, we promoted him. Just like Drip, when he was coming up, we promoted them. Just like um, when everybody else is coming up out there, this is a platform for you guys to be promoted. This one is called Impatha. Impatha. Beautiful, casual sneaker. Letty ski. And I'm just happy with the um, level of entrepreneurship in the country. Maybe let's start from there. What do you think of this whole uh, movement that is just buzzing all over, not just South Africa, just all over the continent and around entrepreneurship? I think it's high time that we take control of our own future and our own economic activities in um, in, in a country and in a continent as a whole. Um, because previously we were we were taught to depend on umlung to get a job. You know, we were taught to go to school, um, go get good grades, go to varsity, get a qualification, and go get a good job that is secured and that has benefits. Um, but over the time, the job market is continuously to shrink. Um, the, the, the qualifications that you, we were told to go get, they're no longer enough for you to get, to get a job. You need now experience, you need practical experience, you need relevant skills, you need um, you know, to, to be able to prove yourself and uh, put in the work and the determination. So the qualification itself, it's not enough for people to just get the job anymore. So you need, you need the skill, you need the skin in the game, you need to be um, continuously improving yourself and becoming relevant to the industry that you've studied so that you can be able to add value to your employer. Um, so, and, and, and because of that, the, uh, the number of graduates, they're increasing in terms of the unemployment rate of graduates because there's a lot of people that went to school to study but at the same time, where are the job creators? We can't just preach about job creation, uh, but without talking about job creators. So we need a lot of job creators. That's why we now have a lot of this buzz around entrepreneurs that are now taking matters to their hands to say, it's, if, if it is to be, it's up to me. Let me take control. Let me be the one that creates jobs. Let me not also add on to the number of people that are seeking jobs, but rather create jobs for those that are, um, are seeking jobs. In that way, we are able to win and we are able to grow as a continent itself. And what introduced you to entrepreneurship? Um, I think for me, um, poverty did. Um, because I was raised by a single parent um, in a squatter camp called the Madelago of Ekasi, Tembisa. Um, so because um, um, my mother was also a hustler, um, so she would hustle here and there and, um, a, you know, in, in a good month she would make about 2,000, 2.5 at most and will uh, go to bed at least having something to eat. So she tried quite a number of things and then I jumped in as well. I started, um, you know, trying to help out my mother as well, you know, selling sweets there, being a cameraman there, uh, tried the DJing there, um, Mashonisa there, um, <laughs> sold cold. <and laughs> <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I tried, I tried different things, and um, I ended up um, buying and selling cars, of which I think that's one of the um, businesses that made me quite a bit of money. Um, and then I saw some light into entrepreneurship, and um, I, I went on to become a professional. But the professional environment, because your earnings are kept a pay month because you've already have a package cost to company this is the amount that you are going to pay you um, regardless of how much you're bringing to the company you're still earning the same amount of money so that is that for me that was a frustrating because on the other businesses that i've had over the years um you know the amount that you put the more you put in the more you get out but in in, in, in an actual um in, in a professional environment you can put as much as you want but you're getting only what you guys have agreed on so for me that was frustrating and i was pushing to say look i think there's greener pastures outside there and looking at the um the the the, the environment our economic environment where the job market um continuously to shrink because of um, a number of um, um economic reasons that leads to that um so i saw saw it fit to say let's not just look to um, the other counterparts to, to create jobs for us. Let's also create jobs that are sustainable, uh, jobs that pay our people well, because that's another thing. Uh, you look at the stats in South Africa, more than 75% of the population of South Africa, they earn less than 15,000 rent per household. And this is an average household um, of about six people in the household. So um, you, you can tell that people are earning less um, because of the, the, the current job creators uh, are trying to maximize on, on, on profit and trying to be, make their profit, uh, their, um, their business profitable um, and, and, and trying as much as possible to um, use the little that they have to hire more people. So as a result, they compensate just the bare minimum to ensure that um, people can, uh, they can have employees to grow their businesses. But if, if we create more job creators, uh, then the skill becomes becomes rare. So there's now going to be a more surplus of jobs, and now the skill when the skill supply and demand, then the demand of the skill will become um, more, and then that's where now the, the the payment is going to increase, meaning that our people's salary can increase when then they are now in demand. But if you have over two thousand people just wanting a job, and you have one post, obviously you, they can take anything. They can take from as little as the minimum wage, which is 3,000 rand, with a, with, with a qualification. So people sometimes they just take because they just want to just to put bread on their table. So that's why they'll take anything that is available to them because um, that one job is now on demand. So it's an auction, basically. Mm, no, I get you. Yeah, so it's an but auction. It's quite interesting that, I mean, you'd move to, um, you, you'd move from, from cars to, to real estate. And that's a, that's a story, that's the same story. You said your mom's was a hustler. Same here, I saw my mom's running hair saloon. I saw my mom's attending seeing Pasha. I saw my mom's attending some sculptures. I saw my plate, I saw my mom's Yes. I saw my mom's started cleaning company, getting some contracts here and there. Literally, I grew up in front of a hustler. Yes. So when my mom starts saying to me, hey, especially when, I, when, when this entrepreneurial journey starts showing me flames, my mom is always on some, hey, you, you, you are educated, you can be a CEO somewhere. Don't you think of it? Come up, you will never work. It 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 So, yes. And then a year later or a couple of months later, you know, entrepreneurs, so then yes, we yeah. back again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I want to say to, to all of you guys out there, guys and girls. If you're dating an entrepreneur, you must never write the, an entrepreneur off. Yeah. Because the, an entrepreneur will surprise you, you will dump them. Today. Literally six months later, after we've done them, or three weeks later, they sign a huge, humongous contract where their life just changes like that. And I guess that's how it's always been, even with, with our ancestors, with our great grandfathers as well. 100%. Because a man has to go out there and hustle so that he can come back and provide. Yes. That's why you'd find them coming from the home, homelands. 
to Johannesburg or to the mines. Yes. And then Jalunyaga now or when there's holidays they go back home. 100%. Because they're working hard so they can provide for their families. Yes. Ain't nothing changed. Yes. You know, we're hustlers so we can provide for our families. Hundred percent. So that's exactly how, how it is. We want to obviously obviously as I'm a Christian, so the Bible tells me that um, the wisest man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So it's about legacy, creating an environment for people, to, for, for your family um, to thrive and to ensure that it, it succeeds um, under the conditions that you that are conducive for them to, uh, to thrive in. So I think for me to get into real estate, it, it came in that direction to say, what's the safest from an accounting uh, point of view, what's the safest asset class that one can put in their money in and um, you know it's the safest but it also has uh, sustainability and also um, you know gives them um, you know a platform to create wealth. So you look at all the millionaires in the world 99% of them um, all of them they have some form of a property portfolio on their on their portfolio so that tells you that uh, there's something right about real estate so it creates it creates wealth it creates um, you know um, generational wealth it creates a legacy it also sustain yourself and it able to also sustain um, your kids and their kids as well so it's a it's a greatest tool to to build wealth especially if you're thinking um, third generation because it's a building you know which 20 years from today this building it's still going to be there unless if someone comes and destroys it but the land that we're standing on, there's no way it's going. And God is, not long, is no longer manufacturing any new land in this world. So the supply of land, it still remains the same, but the demand of it, it's still continuously to, to rise. So that tells you that land itself, it continuously appreciates in value. Even when it comes to taxes, um, SARS does not give um, even your, it, he does not even give you a, a depreciation allowance on land because it does not depreciate. But with other assets, he can give you an allowance to depreciate those assets. So that tells you that land is the greatest asset that we have because even in this land, you build homes, you can um, you know, uh, mine, you can get minerals from it, you can farm from it, so everything that we're doing. It heals us as well. It heals us, it, it provides us for us. and Water, food, everything. everything. Literally everything comes from, from the ground. So this is one of the most valuable assets that one can have. So that's how, that was my thinking into getting into real estate. But most importantly is also to solve our problems, especially as African people. So we need an African solution to our African problems. That's how I got to, 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 to start this house with the aim of solving two problems really. The first problem that we're solving, we're solving accommodation space. I mean, um, I'm from the township, um, coming from the township, I was born and raised in the squatter camp. Um, so I went to varsity, after varsity I come back, um, what are my options? It's either Mkhalek Ekaya, which is in a, in a squatter camp, uh, I was introduced to a Masha Wale, so I, I'm used to a little bit of a, a soft life than where I, where I come from. Um, I go back to Eka, it, it's either I go back to the same uh, setup here Vascom. Um, or I go rent a, a back room of which is still the same setup you've ever scored. Or I'm forced to go outside the township um, to the likes of Midrands and, and, and Kempton Park and stuff like that. So, but um, the, the truth is it comes at a premium. So when you look at such areas, um, you, it comes at a premium. That's why you even have an, um, end up having stigmas such as Midrand people don't have furniture. I'm sure you are aware of that um, stigma. So no, I'm not aware. Of it. What do they say? But I'm not saying I'm not finished. Or is it that meme? Learn a camp chair, pack it and down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, you look at the states. I mean, but I guess we all have to start somewhere. Hundred percent. And but also at the same time, you look at affordability is the biggest issue when it comes to that problem. To say I'm earning fifteen thousand rent in Nepal, and that takes about five thousand rent, so I'm doomed. I don't even have uh, money for petrol. I don't even have money for food. Let alone talk about the furniture itself. So um, affordability becomes the biggest biggest issue. To say um, it's either I'm forced to stay kasi manga funuklele kasi nyohamega financially um, in 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 suburban areas. So there's a huge gap market to say if I don't want to stay kasi. Um, in, a, in a back room um, and I also don't can't afford to stay 
uh, in in the likes of Midran and and and, and Brianstein and the likes. So um, what are my options, right? So there's this gap market that existed for the longest time that was un, 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 uncatered for. So that's where we started to solve the problem to bring a bit of Midran, a bit of Santin, a bit of Brianstein, a bit of Kempton Park back to Ekasi Lokshi uh, by developing these lifestyle living apartments in and around townships and making them affordable. They are, they are dignified, people can be proud to stay in those places. They are secured, security is the biggest issue, Ekas. You, you don't have to, in, in, our, in our complexes, you don't even have to worry about um, parking your car and uh, waking up sitting on top of um, bricks, you know, because that's the reality of um, some people in Ekas. So to bridge the gap between um, you know, people that can afford to stay in suburban areas and those that um, are staying in, um, in the back rooms and those that don't want to stay in the back rooms but can't afford to stay in, in suburban areas. So we're bringing a product that actually speaks to South African or African problems. Um, so it's an African solution to our problems. So that's the first problem that we're solving. The second problem that we're solving is that we're breaking the barrier to entry into property investment market, particularly property development market. So the property development market is a very capital intensive space just to develop the property. So the preparation of development itself, um, we haven't even spoken about the land cost itself. We haven't even spoken about the development cost itself. Just the preparation of it, it's a costly, it's a, it's a lengthy and costly um, exercise. So you look at things like rezoning, for instance. The rezoning process takes anything between six months and 36 months, if you're lucky. And um, that, between those periods, it actually takes money for, from your pocket. You need, you need your, um, your engineering studies, your geotech studies, which cost um, th a couple of tens of thousands. Um, your um, traffic studies, your engineering reports, your um, storm management plans and storm management reports and uh, you know stuff like that. So that is a very um, also it's very uh, professional intense. So you need the right professionals that knows what they're doing in order for them to put these reports in place correctly in the way that are actually required by the municipality before they actually do the actual submissions. Arch uh, architectural fees themselves, I mean the cheapest architecture that you can get currently is about 85 rent per square meter. So if you have a large development, so you're looking at a couple of hundreds of thousands or uh, even if not millions in order for you to have that drawings in for before we can even talk about approaching the bank because the bank would not even look at your applications if your project is not um, is not ready yet it's not fu at a fundable stage so um, in order for you to get it to a fundable stage you need a couple of millions um, in order for you to prepare your your project so it's very capital intensive from a black person that grow uh, grew up without um, without much and grew up from po uh, in poverty so it puts you in a position where you ca you don't have an article that you can say I'm going 10 million lapo, you know, just to uh, do this uh, preparation of this development, or you're one of your assets to um, to 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 put it as security to get a loan or a bond from from the bank in order for me to do this particular development, or can you come in um, in five million so that we prepare this so that we can get uh, probably about forty million from the bank and do the actual development. So we don't have such resources at our disposable so with the little resources that we have um, there's what you call um, if we combine our resources together um, we can we are able to access the collective buying power so when we have collective buying power we are able to access better investment re um, opportunities that gives us better investment returns so we're breaking the barrier to entry into property investment market by introducing our people into property investment um, at a lower amount by breaking it from millions of rent to just mere 5,000 rent. Your company has got opportunities for, for, um, for investment from all the way as low as 5,000 rents? 100%. How though? How does that work? So um, our company, so we, we, we issued a prospectus um, November last year. So it's coming to, to an end in, um, on the 28th of February. So we issued a prospectus, um, issued about uh, our initial public offering. It's 200,000 shares and 1,000 rand per share. 
so meaning that people can subscribe and buy those shares and own shares and share certificates um, that are able the fund the private equity fund it, it actually going to be um, buying properties and developing properties and they will get returns from that so it's a fractional ownership so they are paying mm. a fraction of the cost to get the fraction of the benefit so mm. they don't have millions of rents but they can still um, participate um, in a larger property portfolio that gives them better investment returns as opposed to using the 5,000 rent and getting you know, 2% or 1.5% or even 0.5% from the bank. Um, rather than doing that with your 5,000 5, rent, you can put it in an actual um, fund that actually performs at an estimated of about 16% internal rate of return per annum. So you've got a, you, do you currently have a, an existing fund? Yeah, we currently are, uh, have an existing fund. Is it open? It's open to the public since November the 26th. It's closing on uh, the 28th of February 2022. Uh, uh, it's closing at the end of now, February. Now, 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 Is now, it? now. People uh, so this episode was supposed to go next week, boss. So Robot Boy is going to be mad at us. So we're going to put Robot Boy next week. So let's, here's an entrepreneur, let's rather, let's rather put this episode this week so that at least it's got, people have got some time, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think for the people more than anything, a robot boy will then put him on next week, yeah, just so they can maximize. So guys, he's saying, I think his company has got opportunity, maybe speak to the people, simplify it, yeah. This so, is great. So uh, we have an offering to say you can buy shares in a private equity fund that invest in real estate, in real assets that are tangible, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. Uh, you can invest from as little as 5,000 rent. You can buy your shares. So minimum of 5,000 rent buys you about five shares. You can invest up to, up to 40 million rent if you have a bit of money um, um, available for you to invest. But you have until the 28th of February at 5 o'clock in order for you to buy those particular shares. That is incredible. And what, what are your current, uh, let me say, I know you've got multiple projects in the townships um yes. what would you say is your current biggest uh, uh development or project so the current um one that is in the pipeline we actually having um a, a development that is coming in alexandra first of its kind um it's going to be a 20-story building above ground uh, the first toilet 20 story 20 story acres <laughs> in alex yes you're lying I'm bro i'm telling you <laughs> wow you're building a skyscraper in alex a skyscraper in in, in the township so ah, guys you see that's why I, I love being in this game and living in this time like just black young black people are doing great things guys you're building a skyscraper in alex acres in, in alex so we're bringing the first tallest building in african townships in South African townships, this is the first of its kind, 20-story building above ground, five-story um, uh, underground basement parking. We have, we're going to be have a retail center um, on, on, the, on the ground. We're going to have a lifestyle center right in the middle of the building. And we're going to have a, um, a high-end restaurant um, with the rooftop, La Papezulu, with a 360 view of half of Gauteng. Uh, that's exactly what we're bringing Ekas in the township. So what this building is going to do for the people of Alexandra, because it's first of its kind, it's going to bring a bit of traffic into Alex. So when you're having traffic into a specific area, so it opens up economic activities for other people that are coming there to see this iconic building next to, um, next to Santin in Alexandra. With, that, that is matching the same standards as, as, as Santin, but it's Ekas. You know, and uh, that iconic building, it's actually was also going to bring a lot of traffic whereby if there's a lot of traffic coming into, 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 into a gas, people coming to that restaurant to come and see and, and view when they have um, had their two or three beers, they, they want to drive home. So people would now see opportunities to, to open your Airbnbs and um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bed and breakfast lab and so that people can now rent um, for a night or for two nights. So also, it's going to be residential. It's going to be a oh, residential wow, building. So, so it's going to house over 220 um, apartments. Um, apartments in it. Okay. So 220 apartments in it. That's wow. exactly what we're bringing in, 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 in Alexandra. So it's going to change the whole economic activities. Ekasi. People will can start restaurants in the very same streets, La Ciso, Bega Corner, the building between 1st and 2nd Avenue in Alex. And you know, earlier on, I was saying to you, I was trending uh, during the week um, and a couple of days ago because of a video I posted on my TikTok 
I guess being Bashile because some people are thinking, hey, okay, <laughs> what's wrong, <laughs> right? You know? And I guess some people haven't seen me in a while because I'm saying I'm a threat, you know, some yes, people yes, on the yes. TV. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people just started getting concerned, but it also, that video, basically, I was talking about us getting in, in tune with nature. Yes. us going to rediscover ourselves as Abanda Bamnyama, us reconnecting with our understanding of Balega Gwelanga, trees, walking barefooted and all those things. Mm. And I mean, I'm just saying it like as an OG, I'm just thinking it's just knowledge that is out there. A lot yes. of people understand grounding, a lot of people, it became so great that it created a conversation where, why am I, why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up so as to say, Etembisa, we used to be owned, used to be a farm. Mankulma no Koko, I think it was just around before the festive season, what to say, Mankulma no Tembisa used to be plaz. Yeah. It's walk, walk and walk. I'm generally keeping Zangale society. Yeah. Tembisa be in Jani. It's quite an interesting history. You 100%. know, there is a place when you're going towards Pretoria called Kalinen. Yes. The same guy, Kalinen, owned that entire farm, La Posawi Tembisa, and I'm saying. Quite interesting. So it was interesting for me yeah. to just learn a little bit about Tembisa's history. Yeah. yeah. So you now talking about Alex. I'm sure Alex has got its own history and I, I don't think any developer would like to put up a structure in a place where they haven't done any research about the history of the township because yes. when you're in this development space, I'm starting to get exposed to things like the community has to approve of the, of, the de of the development that you're about to bring up. Yes. Otherwise, yes. they're going to oppose it and the municipality is not going to approve it. 100%. So you have to be in tune with the community. You have to be involved. You yes. have to do things that benefit the community. You also yes. have to be... Um, but in uh, awake as far as the Alexandra community is concerned, maybe did you or your team um, do any of, that, any of that type of research around the Alexandra Township or the history? So, so in terms of how I got to start this, um, the, the initiative of, of this building in, in, in Alexandra, I was invited by U Bab Twala, Bab Linda Twala. Bab Linda Twala. Yes. From Alex. From Alex. So he is regarded as the father of Alexandra. Wow. So he's <laughs> born Bab Twala. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm honored. Ubaba was Alexander. So he's the father of so Alexander. He's the father of Alexander. Wow. Yeah, so that is such a blessing. It babe. is. It is such a blessing. So he invited me to his house and then he, he told me about the history of Alexandra, where the Alexandra comes from. He even took me to one of the heritage sites. I said, Alex. I didn't know that Alex had, had heritage sites where. Um, uh, even the, um, our legendary um, uh, Baba Babu Nelson Mandela was also lived for a short while in Alex, and um, some of our icons um, that are, were fighting for the apartheid um, also lived in Alex. And you know how Alex was formed, who formed Alex, um, and also you know when they were fighting for Alex to stay in the map, and and just the rich history and heritage of Alexandra. He took me through that and also um, how he is trying to do. So there's a project called um, Alexandra Makeover Projects that they, they have um, started doing just to better uh, the lives of people of Alexandra. So I was also made a patron in that, in that uh, project. So that's how I then started to say, look, this is one of the other ways that we can actually quickly change the economic activities of the LX by just bringing something that is iconic that drives good, um, you know, traffic into 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 um, Alexandra. So by doing so, we're ensuring that we are increasing um, uh, a lot of um, economic activities so that other people, not only those that benefit from the project itself, but the community as a whole, they can now also start um, other businesses as well. So my question is, the fund that you spoke about earlier. Yes. Uh, if, can I participate in that? Oh, sorry, let me, maybe that, there's a better way of asking this question. Does the investment into that fund offer me the opportunity of owning a fraction of that project also? 100%. So the fund will be investing in these projects that I'm talking about. Um, you know, the, the, the Twala Towers, um, you, the fund is going to be funding that particular development. So, so that's that what the building is called, Twala Towers? It's going to be called Twala so, Towers. So it's in honor of Wab Twala? Yes, it's ah, in honor of guys, well done, <laughs> his man. legacy and also what he has done, his contribution to the community as well, and to ensure Guti, um, his name is um, lives longer, you know, um, in terms of it, um, the... the, 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 the uh, the legacy that he's leaving behind to to always be remem remembered as someone that actually cared 
about Alexander and the people of Alexander. So Tola Towers is coming? It's coming and we want to complete it while he's still alive. Lovely. So maybe how many years project? Is it five years, seven years? Uh, it's probably going to be about a two-year project. Oh, okay. Yeah. So by 2025? Yeah, we should have. We should have already opened Tola Towers. Oh, wow! <laughs> and and there's an opportunity to invest in it's, as one of the projects. Yes, as one of the projects. So because we have that, that's the biggest and that's the iconic one okay. uh, that we are most proud of to be bringing in South African townships. Um, this is one of many that are, bring, are coming in terms of the tallest buildings in in South Africa. Uh, but it's going to start in. It can on, they, they can only be one first. Mm, you know. I get you. I yeah. Get so you. Uh, that's why we're excited about it. And then there's Tembisa. We're bringing a, a um, prestige park in Tembisa, uh, where we're going to be building um, also lifestyle apartments that uh, have security. You know, like your gut house from it, and your uh, fiber connection, your um, DSTV plug and play, your backup power. That your entertainment areas and your brass stands. So it's a fully um, 10 key lifestyle living apartments that we're bringing in Ekasi, Tembisa. We're bringing others in, um, in Mayatin and also in, in Villa Lisa and Boxbeck. So that's exactly um, some of the projects that are on the pipeline that we're coming. That this fund that we're speaking about is going to be investing in. So these are incredible projects that are on the pipeline. And how long have you been running this house? So BizHouse was started in 2017, okay. uh, formally registered in 2018, so it's been good five years. Okay, partners? Um, yes, we have. We do have partners, uh, both from the supplier side to contractors to um, also to investment partners that we um, obviously have been involved with um, in different projects because every project has different investors in it. Yeah, so people uh, previously, prior to this fund, People were investing in specific projects. Yes. So we had a specific project to say, here's a project. It's coming in Tembisa. Um, this is the total cost of it, and this is the minimum of it um, that you can invest in it. So when we started a Biz House, the minimum investment into Biz House um, projects it was around 250,000, um, and then we 250,000 rents. Yeah, okay. 250,000 rents, and then we brought it down because of the barrier. It was too high for most people. So we brought it down to about 100,000 rent um, per investor. And um, it was also quite heavy for, for a lot of people. And then we brought it further down to 50,000 uh, per investor. It was still heavy for, for most people. And then that's when we launched the fund, uh, property, uh, this property, equi private equity fund um, under Bezhaus Capital. And that we uh, have launched and we brought the barrier down to 5,000 rent in order for people to start investing in property. So that's exactly what we've done. And we're an authorized financial service provider under the Rainsell Fund 2 Limited License, FSP number 50359. That's exactly where we are, that we listed this particular fund. That's incredible, I'm very proud of you, man. And if you don't mind, I just want to hold you. I'm actually 29, 20, 29 years old. <laughs> You're creating magic already. Yeah, no, um, we have to. Talking have hundreds to. of millions already. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. No, we and, have to. And for people like, that don't know, who would see Matela Gofa is, you know, if you don't come from the township, you don't understand that even in the township within itself, there was, I don't know if you call it classism, where there's us that comes from that come from Elokshini, like the four room houses. Yeah. But we look down upon guys that come from the squatter camps. Yes, hundred percent. Right. Yes. yes. And and the, so the township has got its own dynamics on its own. Yeah. And I know Imatela Gupa because I grew up around that area. Only Lambelene Saloon as Tama. Oh yes. 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 And Imatela Gupa ni akava. I see Ferna se Tembi. I see Ferna se Rabasuto. I see Ferna se Mfikweni. Yes. I see Ferna se na se Tama. Tama hands. Yes. Yes. Yang kusta na. So seeing Imat, I was there when Imatela Gupa was new. Yeah. I was a kid when Matelufa was, was started. Yeah, yeah. And I know what type of a squatter camp it is. To see the type of a young man it has produced, I'm very, very impressed. No, thank you. Thank you so much. I think um I think Matelagufa is arguably the most uh, poverty stricken part of Itembisa. And then there's uh, places Amasaba Abo Hospital View. Abo Hospital View, Abo Mkatini, Abo Mauking, um, you know, uh, but um, with, with when it comes to yeah there is classism because now people that comes from uh, Mao Gang they look down to 
are those that come from Abostama, Maforo. And those that come from Estame Forum, they look down to, uh, even those that stay Emma Pekro, they still look down to the guys that stay uh, M Queen. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's it was really, um, it's a really tough mental a barrier to actually overcome and also see value in yourself as a young person to say, look, you need um, whatever, um, you know, that circumstances that you come from, it does not really determine who you become. So it does not even, um, you know, determine your value as a person because you can become whatever yet you want to become. It's possible for everyone to do it. Um, all you need to do is just change how you think and start uh, thinking success, start, start exposing yourself to, um, you know, people that are successful, that are doing it, people that are doing what you want to do. Start reading about uh, people that have done it before, people that come from maybe similar background, even worse than yours um, sometimes, uh, people that come from, um, you know, peop uh, places that were written off to say, this, in this place, nothing, nothing of value can come out of it. You know, so um, I think it's a mental thing to say you must shift, um, your, you have your man, a mental shift in terms of uh, where you see your life, where you want to go in terms of um, where you want your, 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 the direction of your life and the type of impact that you want to have in society and the people around you to ensure that you also not only better your, your own life but also better the lives of others that are around you and th those that are coming after you that are looking up to you as well so i think um, mentally it, you need to be a very uh, mental strong person but you continuously have to um, develop your mind in order for I you get to that. scale out okay, uh, um, so uh, in, in, um, in Kopanong, uh, that's where I did my grade 6 and 7 and then grade 8 to grade 12 it was SDK uh, that's where I, I, in I failed my grade 10 <laughs> I failed grade 10 <laughs> So you still okay. Yeah, I think. We were introduced to a bazaar. Yeah, stage must tell us again. You can't put your hand in voice and break it. Yeah, can't put your hand in your voice and break it. And then you repeated. <laughs> then I repeated, and um, quite frankly, when I repeated my grade ten from being uh, failed my grade ten, I actually became the top learner as scale. Wow. Yeah, I started Shama Hundred and the. And then look at that. Um, yeah. okay, okay. So, okay. So, my whole high school life from grade 8 until grade 12. So. I think I've been to. Yes, have you've I been, been to. to you've, you have. Because I've, I've visited almost every school in Tennis. I remember, Actually, in I remember 2006 or 2007 when you came in um, the set last scene, you know. Uh, oh, I've been to SDK. Yeah, the set last scene, and then every learner. They went crazy and then they went out of class. They didn't care what it's in the middle of class. They just went crazy. You lied, yeah. So was, you were still a student at the I was, time? I was still a learner at the time uh, as the game, and it was just incredible to watch. And when you told us that it's possible, now we are you know, showing us your scars and. So this is to show I've had the same challenges that you guys have. I might be coming from, uh, you know, Kulele Forum, Gotwa, it's still Sasekasi, you know. Mm. Um, I still face the same challenges, Sasekasi. Uh, but I still managed to make something of myself. So it's possible for you as a young child, it's oh, possible wow. for you as a black child to also make it out of land and make something of yourself. So that was... You're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> so I'm literally sitting with one of the students I used to motivate yeah. many years back, ago. Back, back then. I I'm literally now sitting with him. He's now a businessman. Yeah. I'm 100 million. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Wow, bro! It's incredible of the impact that you can actually you, that you actually have on people that are actually looking up to you, even from a distance. That never say anything to you, um, but they just watching from a distance because not everyone is um, bold enough to even text to say um, you changed my life. Mm. Um, you know, not everyone has is confident enough to even approach you to say, "Hey, uh, Hotman, you did it when you spoke one, two, three um that time that actually that's how i changed how i looked at life and that gave me hope to say there's still hope for me to 
I can still make something of myself and uh, better my life. My brother, I think we're in debt. I understand why you are doing real estate in Timbis and big up for that. I'm Thank very you. proud of Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so I understand. much. I, I, now I totally get it. I think we also need to partner on some good initiative projects because I want to do more work at Tembisa this year. Okay. I've been spending a lot of time there. The whole of last week I was there in Shaduma Koke Round. Yeah. Um, this is after being with her the whole, of, well, half of December. Yeah. I've just seen a big gap and I think most of us, like us, and, and uh, even Namayama Chenza from a Tembisa Chenza, sisters, we have to go back to a Tembisa. Yeah, we If do. you're from Mblazi, go back to Mblazi. From Guamashu, Ocha Sijero, um, um, Ngodini, whatever it is, guys, we have to go back to our townships, physically be there, at least even if it's once a week. Because, you know, what I'm planning to do this year is I want to work with that YES program that the president launched. I was a part of it when they launched and it collapsed. And sure. my heart was so sore yeah, to see yeah. that it's collapsed. Yeah. And the structures are still there, though. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. I need to come and be involved more hands-on like us yeah even yeah. if it's just once a week even if worst case scenario once a month yeah or in the beginning to be very involved and form some sort of a system that is able to run itself even in our absence yes but as yes. long as we are there to support it or mentor it somehow you know 100 percent. i would love to collaborate with you and do some good things no, definitely us, yeah. i am down um let me know of the details i am definitely in into into um doing more projects than doing just the upliftment for you guys you know just to you you know, there's 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 a young Lebuchang sitting somewhere. Yeah. That that has less, lost hope, but that can you know become the next um, you know Elon Musk. You yeah. Know, you yeah. Know, just for us going back and giving back, even if it's just with our time, um, it it means a lot to a lot of um, young people out there, and especially the guys that are from Mekasi, especially those that have lost hope. We're thinking, Uuti, I mean, I'm failing. I'm afraid to. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna end up anywhere in dorm because that's exactly what you think when you when you failed and repeating a grade. Um, uh, go to dorm and you can never end up somewhere. But if someone that comes from the same um, you know background or the same um, situation as you are in, so and tells you that I've been there, um, or even worse than where you are, then you 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 already see you to actually i'm actually privileged and i'm actually blessed to be where i am because it's it's some sort of a training for me to become you know stronger in terms of character building in terms of um you know when life throws things at you you are able to use those bricks that life th throws at you and build um a mansion with it mm. instead of instead of you know um just lying down and let it let it kill you and destroy you so you you take that um, that what life throws at you, but you build character with it. You build um, a stronger and um, and and a more um, forceful, um, you know, character that that will help you when you are now pursuing entrepreneurship. Because it's not an easy journey, and it's not for the faint-hearted. I will, I will soft, uh, soft. They won't survive um, this journey. But you, you need to build that character. You need to build that thick skin skin when it comes to to entrepreneurship because things are going to be thrown at you life is going to happen and when it happens at least you'll be prepared by life itself to get you um you know to uh, in a mental mental state that allows you to be able to conquer in that state so i'm happy to to collaborate and do more work in terms of that level i'm very proud of you my brother thank you so much for your time on the hustlers corner I appreciate you. I wish you all of the best. Thank you I so guess, much. I uh, guess this is definitely not the last time we're having on you on here. We're forming a a, a, a real estate property. Um, um, I don't want to say show or podcast within Hustlers Corner, but I just want that segment yes. where we consistently talk about real estate and property. Why? Because a lot of people out there, that's what they say. They want to mm. know more about crypto. They want to know more about real estate. There's some who want to know about Forex. It's because a lot of them, they don't know the right platforms to go to, especially locally. 100%. Yes, there are platforms out there overseas. I mean, you, we see a lot of them on, on YouTube even. Yes. But like Haya, uh, you know, we need people that make this information simple, that people that are able to simplify it. 100%. I bumped into a lot of platforms on TikTok. I bumped into a lot of young brothers and sisters that are talking about real estate, that are talking about hustling, flipping property, etc. Yes. I'm like, those are the type of people that I'd like to invite on this platform. So we would love to have you back. No, definitely. I'll, I'll, I'm keen. I'm in. I would definitely love to be back here. 
it's been an absolutely pleasure and time flew and i didn't even see it <laughs> flying off when we are having this conversation i really enjoyed uh, this segment and i'm um, looking forward to uh, more engagement with you thank you my brother um how do people out there one person out there or maybe five people might be interested to find out more about the investment opportunities around this house how do they get in touch with your company so we have we have uh, two websites it's bizhouse.co.za under the investments tab you can find the application form and the prospectus itself that has all the details about the fund um, you can go to www.bizhousecapital.co.za there's actually um, a link to our our webinar where you can get the the evergreen um, the, where you can get information about register for that webinar and you can now get the actually um, the actual information that is summarized of the summary of the prospectus itself it's sitting in that particular webinar um, so you can register there or you can just watch up our office at zero six seven eight eight one four four two nine. Um, or call our office at 8087-820-4085. 087-820-4085. That's exactly where you can get in contact with us. Or you can just follow us on all of our social media platforms, um, Biz House, um, and, and all across all social media platforms. And I am Lebo Khang Lebebe with a G, Lebo Gang Lebebe. Um, on all social media platforms as well. So, so I, I do share a lot of information about the share scheme and other information about property, how people can get involved and how they can grow their property portfolios and learn more about property as well. Thank you very much, my brother. I appreciate your time and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invite. I appreciate it. Thank you, son. As Thank I always you. say, guys, young people are doing great things with their lives. The question is, what are you doing with yours? Hi. I'm Lebo Khang Lebebe. I'm the founder and CEO of Biz House and Biz House Capital. I've just been hustled by DJ Spoo on the Hustlers Corner. This is the Hustlers Corner.